Hello, how are you? Let us pray. Father Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you for the gift of family and friends. Thank you for the gift of Uganda Christian University. Even as we prepare to discuss through this lecture, I pray and ask you, Lord, to go before us and after us. Bless our comings and going in everything we do. Let you be at the forefront. I pray and ask for all this. Through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome, students. This lecture, we are going to talk about market research and selection. As an introduction, what is market research all about? So, market research is the process of gathering and analyzing relevant information from economic indicators and em emerging trends within a particular industry and the competitive environment of the product or service a company wishes to ensure. So the process of carrying out or gathering information about a particular phenomenon is what we're calling research. Before you start your business, before you endeavor into this venture called international procurement, carry out research find out from those that have been there before you what challenges are they facing what kind of competition are you likely to face who will help you and who is not going to help you who your competition is you need to do research now alexander twine defines market research as a process of determining the viability of a new service or product through research conducted directly with potential customers. Now, this definition brings you to a point. There was a time when they were introducing a new newspaper. So this particular proprietor decided to print the first copies and then give them out to potential customers and ask them for their feedback. When you're introducing a new product into the market, produce samples, produce prototypes, and give them out, and see how customers react. Then gather that information to help you make future decisions. So what are the benefits of market research? One of them is to identify qualifiable suppliers or contractors that can provide goods or services to the organization. As you walk around, as you check on your competition, you're going to find people that are willing to deal with you. Those are the potential contractors or suppliers. Okay. Number two, to determine an appropriate strategy for solicitation, evaluation, and assembly of bidders' lists. Like I said, go to people who have been there before you, organizations that have done it before you, learn from them. You can copy from them. It is not bad to admire. Copy the good things and then go and implement them on your side. So how do we determine product specifications? The process of determining product specification is a critical one and requires continuous evaluation in line with market expectation and needs. Remember people's expectations are ever changing. People's Preferences and tests are ever changing. Keep track with them. Otherwise, you're going to be out of business very, very soon. All right. Number two, quality does not always mean the best, but the right or appropriate quality for the product function, for the production function. There is no need to over specify the materials. It leads to abortive expenditure and it's time wasting. 
do not over specify give the appropriate specifications and let's move on otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time in the nitty gritties of a particular product or a particular process then we have getting specifications right is fundamental in obtaining the quality of goods required yes and yes and yes if you the procurement department get your specifications right and you submit them to your supplier and the supplier gets them right then you're going to get the right required products without any delays without any concerns okay so we have we go to the next section which is supplier or market selection now here supplier can be the same as the market selection how do we select so the selection process is a process of choosing potential suppliers or contractors to provide goods or services that one wishes to source supplier selection being a process it has seven major steps that must be followed when choosing potential suppliers and they include the following number one recognize the need for supplier selection just like in the procurement process it is said and it was said if you do not have a need then don't buy only when a need is identified do you go ahead and initiate the procurement process so recognize the need for supplier selection remember we need the best suppliers so have a variety and pick out the best we are not dealing in a monopoly maybe you the product that you you, you want to procure can only be sourced from a monopoly but if not remember the most of the suppliers the higher the competition and it is you who gets who gains when there is a there is competition number two identify key sourcing requirements what what requirements do you need in the procurement process okay number three determine the sourcing strategy are you going to outsource are you going to subcontract are you going to partner now when i say outsourcing what do i mean a need has been identified that i am hungry now if i am hungry i want to eat food should i make it myself or should i order on jumia jumia foods or can i go out to the next restaurant now when i make a choice that I have to eat out i cannot make it myself i am outsourcing to let the other person provide not me okay then point number four is identify potential suppliers out of a list of suppliers that you've got out of this competition you're able to pick out the best now pick out those potential ones narrow down maybe you, you you see like for in job interviews there are jobs where you go and there are over 1000 applicants but you go the, the the company goes on narrowing down to the top 10 to the top 3 and then top 2 and then they choose the one or maybe they want two out of the 1000 now that is a similar process that we are going through right now now limit suppliers in the selection pool back to my example of job applicants and then determine methods of supplier evaluation how are you going to evaluate them are you going to use performance past performance or are you going to use the present performance so make a selection how are you going to evaluate and select them and then lastly select suppliers and reach 
an agreement when you select the best when an organization chooses the best employee who has passed all questions all examinations who has passed the interview aptitude and so then they sit down and they give them what they can offer now if if the applicant agrees with what the company is willing to offer then you can sign a contract same thing here when we are selecting the supplier or when we are doing market selection so sources of information on potential suppliers where do we get these potential suppliers from one of them when we attend trade exhibitions on a yearly basis we've had a farmers uh, exhibition in ginger we also have the ages old trade fair at lugogo now when you attend such exhibitions you're able to identify potential suppliers in your farm and then number two we have attending a sales conference or seminar all right number three identifying suppliers through trade directories there are directories where you can find suppliers you can find traders the ones that fit what you want then we have journals newspapers magazines that are on publication maybe periodically maybe on a daily basis depending then we have major suppliers such uh, major suppliers such to their buyers house magazines and sales bulletins and then we have the internet is a source of everything ask mr google then we have the government chamber of commerce you can also access them even on the internet and then trade ministries during visits overseas remember we are dealing in international procurement so when the minister or a delegation from the trade ministry visits a particular country they come with these brochures they come with all sorts of information that you can that can actually be helpful to you to select a particular provider service provider or a particular supplier of whatever you need so what is the criteria for evaluating potential overseas suppliers one of them is the management capabilities so assessing potential suppliers management capabilities is difficult but important after all management runs the business and makes the decision that affects its potential operational operations competitiveness and the products so how well is the management of that supplier the supplying organization how well are they run okay the management capabilities and then we have the financial stability now in terms of finances we are looking there's a person you're going to choose that you're going to be my supplier of this product and then this person from the onset says at least pay for me uh, pay me at least 75 percent i don't have money to produce what you are asking for then such a person is not the right person to deal with ideally i would choose to deal with somebody who gets a contract then they say you'll pay me when i have fulfilled my obligation so they use their own money they are financially sound they use, they use their own money then at the end when the consignment is ready and shipped to your to the final destination then you can be able to make the payment okay now check the financial stability i've given you two scenarios where one really doesn't have the capacity to produce they need you to pay them so that they can produce and then another one is willing to produce put in their own money inject their own money 
and then at the end of it, you make the payment for what they've done. I would rather deal with the last one. Then we have the employee capabilities. So the employees that the supplier has, how qualified are they? Are they mediocre employees? Check it out. And how will you know that? You're going to do market research. The quality management. Now, we are looking at the flow of information. We are looking at the products themselves. Are they able to give you quality products? Next, an important point to note is what is that working in an organization that is registered with ISO would wish to work with suppliers who share the same dedication to quality. This also goes back to quality management. Then we have process design and technology. What kind of technology are they using? What kind of technology is this particular supplier that you have chosen still using? You'll find somebody who is still in analog and today technology is defining the way things are done. I'll not go with a supplier who is still analog. I want a digital supplier. In conclusion, it is incumbent upon the procurement function to ensure that the suppliers that work with the organization are properly selected and due diligence is done before they are qualified. This should be done to reduce waste save time and reduce cost. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you.